transfer of military equipment, stuff that we use overseas in Iraq and Afghanistan to suppress terrorism, but ending the practice of taking that equipment and using it here domestically. Is that correct? Yes, that's absolutely right. What's going on is uh, Biden, he made campaign promises um, that he would end the militarization of police. Uh, this has been a hot topic for not only Black Lives Matter, but many uh, libertarian groups and right of center groups as well. It's kind of a bipartisan issue. People don't want to see their local police driving tanks down the street and having <laughs> access to grenade launchers and these high powered assault rifles that they might not. Uh, they might not need. Well, but is that is that hypocritical? Because Molly, as a libertarian, I I would like to own tanks, grenade launchers, and all the all the fun stuff. <laughs> of course, you do, Austin. Yeah, I mean <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, part of it. But um, you know, we we haven't seen great effect uh, from from the program so far. It's been going on for over twenty four years. There's not much government oversight with the program. Um, we've had about uh, $34 million um, dollars worth of equipment have been transferred from the Pentagon to local law enforcement just this year alone, um, and that's under Biden, who, who promised to put a stop to it. But what we've seen, unfortunately, is uh, that police shootings actually uh, increase when, um, when they have access to militarized um, gear like this. But is, so is the suggestion— yeah, we're speaking to Molly Davis uh, from the Libertad uh, uh, Institute. Uh, she's a senior contributor at Young Voices. Molly, is the, so is the idea that you're you're advancing here the causation correlation fallacy? Because and and forgive me for you know kind of playing devil's advocate here because I just I, I wonder you know what your thinking is on this. Is the idea that you believe it's linked that if we bring these you know these weapons of war you know home and they're being used by our police agencies that they're more willing to use them because of the equipment? Yeah, I think that the idea is that they're linked. I mean, they're, they're, I think it does create um, a, also a cultural problem of us versus them mentality um, by, by militarizing our police. Um, and it also decreases, I think, trust in local law enforcement, too. Um, it's probably frightening to, to kind of see them um, equipped with all this military gear. Sure, sure, yeah. I mean, um, and, and like my initial, my initial kind of joke about how I want tanks and— and howitzers and 88 millimeter, you know, guns and things was was sort of is tongue in cheek. But I guess, Molly, the point that I was saying is the reason, like, for example, that we've had gun control in the United States so frequently is because many times the like John and I were talking about Bonnie and Clyde, all the, the weaponry that they had in their vehicle. Many times the police agencies felt like they were outgunned. I mean, what would you say if a police officer or a sheriff said to you, hey, the reason why we, we need these um you know, weapons from overseas that we need to be quote unquote militarized is because we're being attacked by people who are using heavy weaponry, who are using military weaponry on the streets. I mean, you know, the police want to at least be as equally outfitted as the people that they can go up against, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Um, and, uh, I mean, it's not just the you know, it's not just the rifle. They're they're getting equipped with mine resistant ambush protected vehicles and grenade launchers as well. Right. Um, and yeah, I mean, they they may ha have legitimate reasons for wanting to to take part of this program and get access to that. You're absolutely right. But there's there's um, a piece here that's missing. They think it's the transparency and accountability piece. Mm. I mean, what's happening right now is the federal government is just handing over. Um, all this equipment and weapons with no local um, oversight, local or state oversight. So it's basically just an agreement between the federal government and then the local police department. Talk, and so, talk you know, to us one, about one this. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Can, please continue. One possible solution is for, uh, is for state governments to um, have to approve, you know, the, the transfer before it happens. And so this would give the the law enforcement, the ability to stand up in, in front of the pub, in a public meeting and kind of justify the need for the equipment and then also the public.